So we have our nice new shiny DC-3. She's a bit of a handful, isn't she? A bit like the, uh, the, the DC-6. There is a learning curve to this. Um, I was perusing YouTube last night and I came across an amazingly good video uh, made by the person that done the flight model for this aircraft, the DC-3. Um, some information in this video will be a direct reference from information in that video. Um, it's condensed down a little bit. So it's a combination of information from that video, um, how I personally like to fly the DC-3 and what seems to work for me. This is basically a get used to the aircraft and just have some fun with it. So one of the poignant parts of the, uh, the video made by uh, Flight Model Review is to do with your weights and balances, which will help with actually getting this taking off more accurately and more how you would expect it to fly. So the most importantly, the first thing we need to do is we need to go over here, weights and balances, because you does act a bit odd if you don't get it right. Now this seems a bit odd, doesn't it? 24,000 pounds. Seems a bit sort of, ooh, that's a bit too much weight, but it's almost counterintuitive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bang my fuel all the way up to 50. So we've got 100 in here, 100 in here. We'll leave the auxes there. What you want to do is see this number here. We want to get as close as damn it to that number. So we want to get to 26,200 pounds. If we move our slider, there you go, 26,220 pounds. Now we need to adjust our center of gravity to 25.5 degrees, which is over here. You move your slider. Now, one thing you need to be aware of is if you do this in your pre-flight um, menu, when, you know, when you're in the world, when you pick your live settings and so on and so forth, if you do that there, you will still have to do it in sim because it will still play around with this. It will move it somewhere else. Last time I done it, it came out at 26 something odd. It was out. If you do it in sim, that's the easiest way to do it because then you know it's set and correct. And this will actually mean that the aircraft takes off more akin to what it should be taking off. Like it's not necessarily going to do the skyrocket and murder duck you. It's well worth noting. So get your center of gravities correct. I did try setting it to zero and that had mixed results. That was almost on the far end of the equation. But anywho, so, oh yeah, I digress. So what we'll do as well is now while we're here, we may as well get the plane started, right? So I've got to remember how to do this myself. I've only done it a few times. Um, now, if I remember rightly, technically you turn on ground power, even though we don't have ground power available because of that cedar mountain. Um, we need to make sure that our mixtures are full and rich, full and rich, prop is full forward, full forward and crack our throttles. Okay, so just a little bit of a crack on the throttle. Parking brake is on. Just double check. Yep, parking brake is on. Fuel selectors, we need to go over here and we need to go left main. Left main, there we go, left main and right main export is just over there so left main right main so we've got fuel we've got mixture we've got prop we've got throttle let's just reset my view go back to the normal one now what we need to do now is we're going to start with our left engine what i'm going to do is i'm going to put the booster pump on for the left engine the engine prime for the left engine. This switch goes up, and this is what threw me. So that's now up. Now set the energizer, which is basically a big whack off flywheel, to the left hand engine. Wait a second or two. Now that's doing it. We go over here, make sure our mags are both set. We need our magnetos. So that's giving us time to let the flywheel spool. Now we mesh the flywheel, and all being well, if I've done this right should start there we go engine is fired and live and we went some repeat from the right hand engine go down to the fuel pumps I should say and energize the right hand engine 
right hand primer. Set mags to both. So this is giving us time for the flywheel to spool up. And then we hit mesh. It should fire up. engine start on right hand engine right. now we need to do uh, our cow flaps let's just get those open so we don't cook the engines and open and open right so that's cow flaps done engines are fired up now we turn on battery ramp power off um, that's all good so Peter heats on um, then all these on but we don't need the landing lights, bright lights, good. Uh, what else do we need to do? I'm going to turn on my inverters, because you have to do that in the DC-6. A lot of stuff um, that you do in the DC-6 is transferable to a DC-3. They're very similar in that respect. Right, so we need to do some configuration for takeoff as well. So, for this particular strip, I set my flaps... To just under half is a very 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 short runway a little bit more of a click a bit more of a click about that just under half should be fine right also we need to make sure that we have the appropriate trim set as well we need to come over here you'll want about two degrees of nose down so we shall adjust our trim so let's do that now so about two degrees of nose down is somewhere around there, give or take. So that is pretty much us configured for takeoff. Okay. Trim set, flap set, ready to roll basically. Um, what we'll do is we'll taxi down the end of the runway now. Um, and what I do is I actually used some flight recorder stuff um, so I can get multiple angles of a takeoff from this uh, strip, which is co coincident coincidentally uh, Cedar Mountain uh, C uh, 42 Charlie Mike. I figured it'd be a nice little challenge because it's a short strip and it's a good way to demonstrate this thing taking off. Right, so let's get ourselves taxiing. So go over here, set our view. It's always nice to taxi on the outside. Bring the power up. On the rudders, parking brake off. Gather her momentum. Takes a bit of grunt to get her rolling. Ease your throttle back down again. You've got some momentum. If you leave it a full chap, you'll basically start taking off, which is not what you want. So if you find you can go a bit slow, just give yourself a bit more power. Make sure that your tail wheel is not locked. I'll show you exactly where that is in a moment, because that will be another thing we need to do for takeoff, uh, which is to set our um, wheel lock. you can get this thing to turn on an absolute dime if you're crafted with a combination of to uh, oppositional toe brake and rudder so do a little bit of right hand toe brake full left hand rudder find a bit of toe brake ease the power up again off the power off the toe brake Let's get ourselves nice and centred. So just again, a bit of splooge of power. Just get the momentum back to idle. And toe brakes. And stop. Parking brake on. Now, before takeoff as well, one thing you want to do, which will help you, is you want to come all the way down here and put your tailwheel lock on. This will help stop your tail from fishtailing around um, behind you when you're trying to use your rudders to correct the aircraft because it will step up onto its front wheels. And when you get it onto the front wheels, you've then got to juggle the aircraft because it's only balancing on these front two. So your aileron and rudder inputs are quite important and it will tug and pull to each side. However, now that we know this, 
we can then go to uh, jump to the video now where we do a takeoff and I'll show you, show you it from different angles. As you gain speed down the runway, the tail will actually start to lift up and the weight of the aircraft will then move onto the forward to front landing gear. As it does that, you're going to have to balance with aileron and rudder to try and keep it going down the center of the runway. As the aircraft lifts, the nose will come up and then it will drop as well as you come to level flight. Bearing in mind, you've also got your trim settings, so you've got to be fairly quick on catching that as well. So the next stage after takeoff, and once you've reached your desired altitude, is cruise. Now, what I found is a nice um, setting for a good cruise and relatively easy trim is about 30 manifold pressure and about 2400 <clears throat> RPM, which will give you approximately 170 miles an hour. Um, at this point, it's fairly comfortable to trim. You'll still have to put a little bit of uh, effort in uh, just to maintain your course, so slight adjustments to the right. But at 170 miles-ish, thereabouts, we're fairly comfortable, we're holding altitude, the aircraft is nice and stable, got a good amount of fuel burn, so we can do some nice long distance and it's fairly chilled out. Now, what I've done, is if you notice at my view, it's quite low in the cockpit. If you sit too high, it'll be a bit tricky to get your horizon roughly where it should be. So I've put myself a little bit lower. One of the things I use as a reference point is this part of the compass here, or this here, this, this hinge here. These are some nice reference points you can use um, to get your flight window correct and helps you trim the aircraft out. Um, depending on your temperatures outside, depends what you want to do with your cow flaps. Mine are currently sat in the open position and if we look, we're not doing too bad temperatures wise. I, I'm not entirely sure if this is working 100% correctly or it's not hugely affected. I don't know yet. I'd have to play around with it again. If we're just covering the basics of how to how to get this thing singing and how to get it cruising and just having a laugh and a relaxing flight. The best way to enjoy these sort of planes. And here's our favorite part, coming in for a landing. Now, there's a few interesting things that you need to make note of in the DC-3. Uh, one of which is if you are reducing your throttle, the nose of the aircraft will dive quite severely. So when you're coming into land or you're making adjustments to your throttle for said situation, what you need to do is put in a lot of nose up trim. This will make life easier on both you and the aircraft, so you won't be wrestling with the controls quite so much. What we're ideally trying to do is get over the threshold at about 80 miles an hour in an ideal situation. Full flaps, gear down. And it's quite a flat landing profile in this aircraft, because what we're going to try and do is get the, the front two gear down and balance on those. You'll see later on in this video that it is not as easy as it looks and I do skid around on the runway somewhat.
So eventually when you do get your wheels to touch, you're going to be playing a balancing game between your rudder and your aileron, trying to keep this aircraft running down the centre line. Don't worry if your first landing isn't buttery smooth. Um, this is probably landing 19 and is one of the better ones. It's not my best one, it's not my worst one. It will take a little bit of time to get the hang of it. Um, there are some notable speeds though. Uh, 80 miles per hour over the threshold puts you in a good position for a landing. Keep yourself as straight down the runway as possible. If you're not lined up with the runway, it will skid to the left or the right, depending on your orientation on the runway. Uh, don't put any back pressure on your chosen control method, whether it be stick or yoke, before 50 miles an hour, as you do run the risk of potentially lifting the nose up and bouncing. Thank you for watching. Hopefully this has helped you a little bit with the DC-3. Um, go and check the Flight Model Review YouTube video on the DC-3. There is so much information there. It is really worth a watch. Take care, fly safe, and good luck with your DC-3. Buttery smooth landings. Bye.